So Hollywood, Florida is not as popular as its namesake, the one and only Hollywood, California. However, the center of the film industry is, may not always be the best place to raise children. Kids need a smaller and less crazy place. This is where Hollywood, Florida comes in. So let's go ahead and do a deep dive into top five reasons to raise a family in Hollywood, Florida. There are many factors to consider when looking at where to raise a family. And we're boiling down, so stick around. You won't want to miss what the locals have to say. Now, you can email, text, call, or DM us with any questions you may have or drop a note in the box below. Or you can skip all that hollow balloon, go right to the front of the line by going ahead and clicking on the Zoom link below and setting up a time where we can spend an hour just kind of going over what is important to you, what you need to know. So but let's go ahead and get into it. So when considering where to raise your kids, one of the biggest features that will help you in deciding whether you should move here or not is the schools and the education system. Hollywood, Florida public schools have above average math proficiency of 62% versus the state of Florida's, which is around 59%, okay? And above average reading proficiency of 61%, and it's also above the state's average of 56%. Schools in Hollywood have an average rating of seven out of 10, which is in the top 50% of Florida public schools. And there are lots of choices for schools in Hollywood, like 135 preschools, 66 elementary schools, 40 middle schools, 24 high schools, 22 public district schools, and 17 public charter schools. Now, it can be difficult getting into private schools in Hollywood. They typically have limited enrollment and competitive application process. There are factors such as academic performance, competitive extracurricular activities, and some of the, and things such as family background may also be taken into consideration when determining acceptance. Additionally, private schools often require the families pay a tuition, which can be a compensating factor in the application process too. Now, the process for getting into a charter school in Hollywood, uh, Florida may vary depending upon the specific school. However, in general, charter schools tend to have a separate application process and enrollment process than traditional public schools. Some charter schools may have an open enrollment, basically means that anyone can apply. Others may have a lottery system where only a certain number of students are chosen through a random selection process. To enroll in a charter school in Hollywood, the parents or the guardians are frequently required to submit an application, which is typically found on the school's website. Some schools may also require some additional documentation, such as proof of residence or student transcripts or report cards or any other records if you're coming in from another area. Typically, once the application has been submitted, the school will review it, notify the parents uh, or guardians of the students of the acceptance status. If accepted, the parents or guardians will need to complete any additional enrollment paperwork, such as registration forms, proof of vaccinations, and similar to the traditional public schools, but you still need to go through and complete all that record keeping, all that information. Now, in terms of difficulty, okay, this may depend upon the popularity of the school. It may depend on the popularity of some of the curriculum that's in the school, that's in the school itself. It also may depend upon the demand of the school itself. It may be in an area of town that it's in high demand. Some charter schools may have more applicants than spots available. This may make the school and the application process itself just more competitive. And however, some schools may have open spots. It's recommended that you check into a, a number of different schools. Look at the ones that are of interest to you based upon curriculum, based upon sports and athletics. If, for example, if your child is into sports and athletics. The Morris Group is a top relocation team. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us, okay? Or schedule a Zoom meeting it's on the link below. We can go ahead and get everything, get you set up. We have to give you an opportunity to ask all the questions that you may have, an opportunity for us to discuss and answer some of those questions. Hollywood is home to a vibrant community of artists. You can see the work both inside the museums and also on some of the some of the walls and some of the areas around town. For example, check out the Arts and Culture Center of Hollywood for modern art and theater, or wander the streets of downtown Hollywood and search many of the murals that are actually on the walls in, the, in downtown. Very, very cool thing to do. Very, very cool thing to look at. Some of those things are just absolutely fantastic. And a lot of them have been done by, have been painted by local artists. In fact, Suzanne and I were down around the Art and Culture Center of Hollywood, and we were actually watching some folks going ahead and painting a mural on the wall. It was just so enjoyable to watch them expressing their creativity. So for a more guided experience, you can also join the Art Walk, which takes place every third Saturday of the month. And basically you walk around, they show you some of the different areas that are going on, introduce you to some of the local artists. It's just a, a very interesting innovative way of bringing some of the arts and the culture out to everybody in the community. And then in, inside the arts work, kids will enjoy Arts Park in the Young Circle, an interactive of an exhibit where not only do they see what's going on and can see what's happening, but they can also have an opportunity to participate in some of the things that are going on and create their own little, their own little bits and pieces of artwork. Very, very innovative, very, very terrific, and always very crowded. So definitely check to see what the availability is and give a quick call down there. Since it is located in the center of Hollywood, 
Um, you can take a little walk along the pathways, the walkways, and you can admire the all the fountains and the foliage that's down there. Um, and the park hosts all kinds of different events, like a movie night. They have food trucks there on different days of the week. We've been able to go back at, we've been able to go down and just experience some of the, the best food that we really ever had, you know, that we never thought would come from a food truck during the food truck times. Okay, so you need to check the schedule also, check the schedule there, what's going on. But it is definitely, definitely worth a trip on down there to go check out the movie nights. It's free, which is great. Place to take the kids, the kids can relax, unwind. They can also have an opportunity to interact with other kids from around the same area. So terrific place to go. And it's very, very reasonable as far as the food goes from the food truck. And, it, and did I mention it's delicious? If I did, then I'm mentioning it again. And if I didn't, then I'm mentioning it. I'm also going to mention it. So it's just fantastic food. So with an average of 270 to 300 days of sunshine annually, Hollywood is a great place for kids. They have the opportunity to be outside playing in the sun, much more so than pretty much anywhere else in the country. And basically, it's even more so since Hollywood being a coastal city, um, everyone goes gets a chance to go and spends days at the beach. So of those 270 to 300 days, a lot of those are spent um, enjoying themselves at the beach. However, Hollywood, like most of the South Florida cities, does get what folks refer to as a significant rain on the average of five to seven days each month, okay? Typically, you get a storm, get a, a rainstorm that comes, may last a half a day, may last a couple of hours, and it just comes through, takes some of the heat out, okay, puts a little bit of humidity in, um, like you can see kind of what we're having y'all right now, T you know, and typically an hour or two, it's gone. Hollywood has things to do for kids of all ages, from over 35 parks and nature centers, to arts and crafts, to a dog park, I mean, and of course the beach. So a couple of the nature centers in the parks that we like is Anniversary Park, then the heart of the historic district downtown. And it's basically, it's beautifully landscaped with all kinds of magnolia trees and oak trees, okay, bamboo and flowering shrubs. It's just absolutely beautiful place to be. The park offers some benches, it offers game tables. That's a shade, it's a shaded and turf playground. So for the little kids, if they happen to take a spill or tumble because it is turf, okay, it's not gonna be nearly as bad as if they were to fall on, on another area. So here we are inside the nature center. So actually one of the things that I ask is, what did you see today? Some snails, mango crabs, somebody saw an iguana. So some of the other things that are down here, so let's go take a little walk around. Nice and cool in here too to get out of the, a little bit of the heat of the sun so and some of the uh the exhibits that they have going on in here so they do have this the theater that have that has shows going on and stuff one of our favorite areas is the ann cole nature center this is 1500 acres um it's the largest park in the hollywood park system and it has it has a coastal mangrove wetland which is absolutely incredible to see it's basically as if you're looking at what's going on you know in kind of a mangrove area swamp area you, you see all kinds of great wildlife um and they have it it's a, it's, a, it's set up so that you can identify endangered species there's all kinds of interactive games and interactive lessons for the kids terrific place to be and candidly if you go down there in the summertime in areas like in, when you start walking through some of the shaded paths in the areas like that you'll see the temperature will actually go down 10 to 15 degrees while making it a whole lot cooler the park has like a, a, a viewing deck so you can go so you actually can go out and look over the intercoastal waterway um, you can see all kinds of wildlife you can see all kinds of marine life and fish it's, it's truly a place not to be missed as i said it's one of Susan mine's favorite places to go to one of the other places that we that we enjoy going to is eppelman park it's on the intercoastal waterway so it's right there on the water okay it's got a picnic shelter it's got benches it's got playgrounds and a kind of a covered shade area um we've taken we've gone down there with some friends of ours that have younger children and then so they can get a chance to play and go out and do and go around sometimes they just need an opportunity to go out into an area that's shady okay and, and just kind of play around and, and you know shake their sillies out as, as we used to tell our kids one of the more comprehensive areas is the oak lake park and community center it's a perfect location for like parties for chat i mean we they've had baby showers showers there, they've had wedding showers there, small receptions, private parties, there's, there's a large meeting room that they have available, there's kitchen facilities that are available, there's a huge concrete like a waterfront patio area, okay, and it has, a, it has a, like a small pavilion also and a playground and a walking path and observation landings and observation places to go out and look over the lake. It's a great place to go if you're planning a small party, a family reunion. We've seen a number of uh, activities going on down there. We've seen a number of gatherings down there. It's a wonderful place to go. One of the other areas that we like is it's Zink Hill Park. Now, Zink Hill Park is not your, it's really not a traditional park. It's, it's just a lot more quiet, a lot more relaxing. It's almost like kind of in a reflective nature. It has a walking trail. It's got 10 different exercise stations. You do frequently see folks going down there, walking around, doing their exercise 
exercises and working out. Um, it's one of the many uh, free exercise facilities that you'll see in and around Hollywood. Basically, the thing, one of the things that I think that makes it so nice to, for us is that when we're out walking around, the foundation of where the exercise equipment is and the foundation of a lot of the trails is basically wood chips, so it makes it easier. It's a lot easier on the, uh, on the, the ankles and the knees uh, when you're out walking because you're not walking on the concrete all the time. You're not walking on wood. It's very, very soft wood chips. It's almost like walking on little pillows. So. Did we happen to mention how much Hollywood, Florida loves our four-legged furry friends? They have five, kind of five dog parks available for folks in and around the area to come and visit. Okay, There's the John Williams Park, the Oak Ridge Park, Emerald Hills Lakes Park. It's actually the Hollywood Dog Bark, okay? Um, it's Poinciana Park, okay? And of course, they have the dog, they have Dog Beach at the Hollywood Beach, okay? You even get a chance for our four-footed furry friends to go out and get a chance to, to romp in the sand and everything else. Now, like everything else, okay, there are some requirements that goes in there that around those. You need to check with each one of them individually to find out what their hours are, if they have any specific requirements. Most of the parks will have two areas, one for the bigger dogs, one for the smaller dogs that accommodates little doggies like our Buford, who some of you have seen in some of our other videos. It's definitely a great to take your pets. Um, the Arts and Crafts, we talked about this a little bit more, the Arts and Crafts Center in Hollywood. I just can't stress this enough. It's an incredible place to go see. Um, you could easily spend a full day there walking around and seeing all the things that are going on. For the older kids and for the adults, there's this incredible glass blowing exhibition. You just, you don't want to miss that. Also for the younger kids, they also very, very close to there, they have the Arts Park at Young Circle. Uh, again, these are areas that they are just fantastic for the kids and, and you'll be amazed at how they just draw the kids in, just get so engrossed and so involved in what's going on. One of the things that I would be remiss in talking about is basically the flow rider, okay? Now what the flow rider is, it's kind of like a, it's surfing, sitting right outside the Margaritaville Resort, and it's like surfing. It's a little area where you surf, and the water comes down like you're going, like the waves are coming in, and you can ride on a little surfboard. You can ride on the boogie board. They give lessons down there. Um, it is something that's fantastic. Our friends have done it. Our nephew has done it. Okay, We, of course, I haven't braved it yet because, you know, I'm just... Not that I'm not that brave. I'm getting there, I'm working my way up. I tried surfing one time and it was, well, it was almost as successful as when I played it, play golf. And those of you that know me or have watched our videos know exactly how successful I am at playing golf. But this, the Flow Rider is definitely something not to miss. It's, it's, even if you're just going by and standing and watching some of the books, some of the, we saw a guy there earlier today. We first got down here, okay. It was, the guy was fantastic. I mean, he was going side to side and back and forth. It was just incredible. So now we're here at the Hollywood Beach and Broadwalk. Okay, we're actually right here right now, but it's one of the things that's not to be missed. It's about two and a half miles long. It's right along the Atlantic, the Atlantic Ocean, right on the coast. Okay, it's wide enough so that you have people who can walk up and down. People can ride bikes. People can ride some of the some of the carts that are going on there. People can go in strollers. Okay, all the way up and down the two and a half miles. There's all kinds of things to see and do. There's bike rental places. There's plenty of places to eat. Okay, there's all kinds of shops and stores. Now they also have an area where you can where you they put on concerts. Now if you're gonna if you're fortunate enough to get down there to catch a concert, you don't, definitely don't miss this, the slice of pizza at Rocco's. It's huge and it's delicious. It's traditional New York style pizza, not to be missed. But it's all kinds of stuff that goes on on the Broadwalk there. It's almost like the, the beachfront center of what's happening down in Hollywood. So we're gonna make a little pit stop here at, uh, at one of the little pavilions that you can kind of come and hang out at. Um, it's got a little splash, pond, splash pad for the kids to come up there, kind of cool off on the hot days. But uh, as you can see, it's basically set up for people to come and kind of hang out and do their own thing. There's a little gym area back over there, which has Talking about earlier, people come and work out and everything else. But little, the little pavilions here, people can have picnic tables in there. They can kind of come and hang out, bring your bring your friends, bring your family, bring a lunch, or do what do like we're doing, heading down to one of the local uh, local restaurants here on the beat on the Broadwalk and getting grabbing something to eat. Now. Folks, Hollywood, like many cities in Florida and the U.S., has its safer areas and less safe areas. Crime grade actually gives Hollywood a, an overall grade of a C. This means that the, the rate of crime in the city is about the same as every U.S. city. Hollywood does rank 45th in the 45th percentile for safety, meaning 55% of the cities in the country are safer and 45% of the cities are not, okay? So the crime rate in Hollywood is 28 per thousand residents. The people who live in Hollywood actually have indicated to us that they, the west part of the city is a little bit more, is a little bit less safer than the than the rest of the city. Um, I would encourage you to go check it out yourself. Go look at some of the crime statistics. Actually, if you get a chance, come down here and take a look at it. We've been all over Hollywood and we've seen some great areas um, in the in the north section of Hollywood, the west section of Hollywood. 
the east section of Hollywood and the south section of Hollywood. So I, I think it's somewhat subjective, but still, some that's what some of the folks have told us. Um, basically, you know, again, your chance of being a victim of crime may be as high as one in 24 to as, to as low as one in 56. So it really depends upon kind of like anything else, especially when it comes to safety. Make sure you're aware of what's going on. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of what's going on. If you're not sure, okay, then, you know, go with somebody else, or, you know, ask or ask somebody a local about it. Okay. Again, just one of these things, more than anything else, if you're aware of what goes on, then a lot of the issues and a lot of the concerns that you have regarding safety can bas will basically just be all taken care of. Leash.com gives Hollywood a grade of B, good for families, with a grade of A for outdoor activities and, and weather. B for health and fitness and an overall grade of a B plus. So overall, it's Niche.com, which we use quite frequently, has come out and basically says that Hollywood is a, is a great place to be. It's a great place to raise a family, to look at raising a family. It's a great place to moving to. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and let us know. And until next time.